Okay, this is the third in the videos that explain why Daniel Speck is wrong. Um, the first two were very nasty. I'm going to try and be nicer in this one. Because there is something important about what he says. You know, each one of us is wrong about some things and right about some things. So, like Christ does in Revelation 1 through 3, you don't just harp on the bad part. And in Greek drama, they did that too. They would they would do the bad stuff usually first, and if they could, they'd end. They did quadrilogies as plays, like we call it miniseries. They try to end it on a happy note, or at least on a complimentary note. So that's what I'm trying to do with this third video. Our boy thinks that oh, Christ is gonna come back in 2030, and the the tribulation is going to begin in 2023. Well, his method of coming up with that idea is dead wrong. But, there is something important about that period. And I've been covering it now for the last two years. We're still working on, you know, how severe of a period it's going to be. It is going to be severe. And that's really why I've been making these videos, because of what we do know. Now, this was the Matthew 24 piece. You know, Matthew 24, 25, part 6 doc, but you you got it as PDF. And as you've seen probably ad nauseum now, these are all the intro doc links. You can download this and check it yourself. This is the Greek text from Bible Works 9, and then the variants are from CNTTS apparatus that are in Bible Works 9. So like sometimes, let's see if I can find one. Matthew 24 is really pretty clean. Um, every once in a while, there is a bracketed word that doesn't belong in the text. I'm not sure how many of them there are in... Ah, here we go. See this? Ton, it's a definite article, genitive plural. That's in some of the texts that we have, but it, they, it looks like it was added later. Okay? So, it's not in the accepted version of the, of the text, and it's also not counted. Now, that's where we got to get into this, because this guy doesn't know anything about what really is in Scripture. And I've done a lot of videos on this. You'll have to start at the 40-second video so you can see the relevance. And then um, going forward about how this accounting actually works. This is the number of syllables in a clause. This is the cumulative amount. You're always looking at the cumulative amounts. The writer of the text keys the syllable counts to the t actual text he's writing. Like this text here in English basically says, and as Jesus was leaving the church, leaving the temple, coming out of the temple. Now, that's really clever because it's 30 AD and he's soon going to be leaving the earth and he's the temple the temple depicts. And in the days when this stuff was written, people played on words like that, like I just mentioned, all the time. They didn't have computers. This was their entertainment as well as their learning process. Okay? So you were supposed to remember how odd it was that here the temple, the temple, there's a word for temple. Okay? And there's a word for Christ, Jesus. Okay? So the temple, the temple depicts is leaving. Those are two words for leaving. He says it twice because, you know, dual nature. It's very punny. All the scripture in, in the original is punny. Okay, so you got you got the real temple, Christ, coming out of the building temple that depicted him, and he's leaving it because he's going to be leaving the earth. Ha ha. So he's coming out of the temple, yeah, because we're going to be going into him when he goes on the cross, and he's going to go out of this world, and we're going to be saved thereby. Now, a Greek reader reading this would know that, all of what I just said. 
and they'd be laughing at the fact that it's 16 syllables because that's 8 times 2, ha ha, which is 4 times 4, the completion of time. He's the whole reason for time, the completion of time. They play games like that all the time. That's how they, they read it. So they would be memorizing the syllable counts and then they would be looking and you do it by clause. These are clauses. You break it by clause, okay? And then they look at the number and like, oh yeah, because this is prophetical. This text is going to characterize something happening in 46 AD. Okay, later writers actually play on this. Because he's talking in 30 AD. So you always have to add 30 to these numbers. Okay, well, 40 years from 30 AD is 70 when the temple goes down. So he's talking temple, 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 temple. And they came up, this is, his disciples came up to him, pointing out to him the buildings of the temple. So it's really wry and biting and satirical to number that at 40. Because once it hit 70 AD, because they, they knew to read it this way, they'd be looking at that same text at 70 AD when the temple goes down. And remember, oh Lord, they're pointing out to you the building. Yeah, the, the Elvis has left the building. So now the building goes down. That's the 40 meaning. You see what I'm trying to say here? The numbers interact with the text to tell you the future. And then when you get to that point, which we're going to do in this video, when you get to that point, you know what it means. You know where you are in time. Now, you don't need to know where you are in time unless you're still down here. So you don't need to know when the rapture happens. You need to know what's going to happen if there's no rapture yet. Got that? And Matthew 24 and 25 is a long litany of how history will go if the rapture does not happen. Because that's information you're going to need to have. You don't need to know. If the rapture happens, you're in heaven. Forget it. You don't, it doesn't, you don't need to know. But if you're still down here, you need to know which way the wind is blowing. You need to know where Christians are going. You need to know what apostasy is going. You need to know what wars are coming up. Because you're going to have, supposedly, Bible in your head. And you got to protect it. If you care about God. You're going to care about protecting his word. Because his word is always under attack. Which is exactly what this text is about. Okay? And then it says, what are the signs of your coming? So the rest of Matthew 24 and 25 is at play. A wit. Sarcasm. On the word sign. That's the word sign in Greek, semion. And that's the word coming. How does God come to you? I've said this before in other videos, so I'm going to repeat it real quickly. God comes to you through His Word. So again, you don't need the rapture. You need the Word in your head. And then Christ comes to you every time you're thinking of it. That's number six. When the Lord came to Moses, that wasn't the second coming. The Lord came to Moses who wanted to know what the Lord was thinking. Well, here you go. It's showing you right here on screen. The Lord comes to you through His Word. So all of this is a map of how the Word comes to people in future history. And I've already spent 90 videos on this. Okay, so like here is about to come uh, when the Lord comes to anybody who happens to be alive when Commodus starts. This is the time of the Antonine Plague because you're adding... 30 to 138, that's 168 A.D. That's when the Antonine Plague came. So you either got, if you knew that something bad was going to happen, then you got out of where you were, you took your word with you, and you avoided the Antonine Plague, which happened in Rome. Okay? There's, each one of these numbers is well defined in the meter of the Old Testament. And when you see 84 here, it's like, okay, what, 84 is decree of God, that's in Psalm 90, and 
Not one stone going to be left on another. What does that tell you? Get out of Jerusalem by then. Well, 84 plus 30 is 114 AD. And that ended up being the Ketos War. But if you were smart and you knew how to read this, you weren't around when the Ketos War started. And it's because the Ketos War started in what we call Libya today. It went all over the Mediterranean. Jews all upset because there was no temple. They wanted, they wanted it to be rebuilt. And this was the last three years of Trajan. But that's future to the time he's, he's talking. But you're reading the text during like 10 years before something. You're like, oh, oh, wait a minute, that's in 84. I remember that from Psalm 90. Uh, and, and, and it's paired up with uh, the temple not, not being there. So it's going to be bad. I better get out. Well, yeah, and you take your Bible with you and then you avoided all that bloodshed. See, that's how they use this. If there's no rapture, you have to know what time it is in history. You have to know the historical trends. And so that's what he's doing. It's a, it's a continual plot. All right, now I've already done the videos, starting with the first one in this playlist, that took you all the way through, you know, the rise of Diocletian and Constantine and, and the rise of the Arabs. See, the first Muslim invasion. See, this was 608 plus 30, 638. He's benchmarking when the Muslims first take over Jerusalem. Because that's a historical trend that recurs every 430 years from that point forward. Something you wouldn't need this to know. You just look at history. But since it's predicted, okay, and what is it saying? Okay, pray that you're not, that your flight isn't going to be on the Sabbath or in winter. So whatever is going to come up in this period, you're going to need to flee. All right, so why not flee before you get to that period of history? Let's say that you're, you know, back here in 600 A.D. And you're still in Jerusalem and you're reading to find out which way the history is going to go. And you see this. Pray that your flight isn't in the winter or the Sabbath. You're like, I got to get out of Jerusalem now. That would be really important in 600 AD. Because 570 plus 30 is 600. You see how you use this now? To get to the complimentary part about what Daniel Speck is saying, we now have to go back to our time. And I first want to take you all the way to the end so you see that he's dead wrong about the 2000. See that? That's 3213. It's, uh, it, it was originally 20, but there were seven extra syllables, seven syllables that I had overcounted. So 3213 plus 30 is 3243 years after the cross. Because, see, we go all the way up to the beginning. In the first syllable, the first syllable is right here. Matthew 24, 1. And this is actually one chapter in the Greek. All right? And it ends at the end of Matthew 25. 3,213 years after the cross. Now, and this just can't be too hard. Alright? That guy is thinking Christ comes back and the millennium starts in 2030. Okay, so if the millennium started in 2030, and he thinks it's a thousand, but it's really 1050, so we'll correct that. That's still only 3080. Okay? 3080 is a lot less then a lot less than 3213 you got that so he, he's dead wrong in what he's saying does it mean it's impossible for what he's saying to be true no and that's where we're going to come back to our day because it is really important that you understand what 20 23 through um 30 is going to be now see 2000 that's 2030, because you always add 30. 
all right this is where we are right now right at that that means Lord but it's two syllables in Greek Kyrie, Kyrie, Anoikson Chomin. These are the apostate Christians behind Trump and the apostate Christians behind Putin. Both of them actually share a doctrine that is known by a lot of different names in history, but it's basically the revival of the Roman Empire. They think that if they revive Rome, that that is holy and it will bring Christ back. The people in America who think that call themselves Seven Mountains. You can just Google or just search on that name in YouTube and listen to people like Rafael Cruz and Lance Wall now who, who advanced this fake doctrine. Listen to them tell you. They want to unify church and state. And they think Donald Trump is the anointed guy to do that. Okay, well the people in Russia think Putin's the guy to do it for them. And so the Christians in the U.S. and the Christians in Russia are making real nice with each other now. Because they all have this same goal. The Russian version of it is called Third Rome. You can Google on that or search in YouTube on that. And then the ancient term for it was the Last Emperor. It goes all the way back in time to Constantine. So the Russians want to revive Rome because they think that they'll be the, the true church and when Christ comes back then he'll reward them and all other Christians will be lower. And they persecute other Christians in Russia. Okay. In the Seven Mountains they kind of believe the same thing about themselves. So this is dangerous. Alright. Now this, 1993 plus 30 is 2023. Remember I said you have to break it down by clause? You break it down by clause. Alright? And I could have broken the clause. Well, you can't really do that because this is this is a collective, collective term. But I could have like broken partenoi, which means virgins. It doesn't mean bridesmaid. It means virgins. Saying, I could have put this on another line. Okay, but the total would still be the same. Okay? Now, the next clause in verse 12 is seven syllables long. That's bad. Okay? I spent the anaphora videos that are earlier in this playlist okay the apocrino anaphora which is what this is that you're looking at right here that where you see the teal color that's an anaphora that is a, a, a measured repetition and every time it's used it has a very particular meaning it's been used before see apocrino which means to answer with a judgment okay Apocrino, apocrites is, is, is how it's sometimes used, okay, like here. Apocrites. Alright, it's used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And every single time this word is used, the difference from that time to the next time it's used, like here, from here to here. The syllable count difference is divisible by seven. In other words, when this text was composed by Matthew, he's measuring his syllable counts. In every single one of these, you've got, you've got seeing verbs, you've got answer with judgment verbs, you've got the use of amen lego humin, which is right here. You've got the use of kurias, which means Lord, numphias, which means husband, Jesus, parousia, which means appearing, and Christos. Every time that word is used, the distance between it and the last occurrence it was used is divisible by seven. This is timed text. I hope you're getting that. So the good thing I can say about Daniel Specks stuff 
is that while he's flat wrong about the way he's interpreting it and the verses he's using, it is true that there's something coming up from 2023 to 2030. It's just not what he's expecting. Okay, it's going to be something public. It's going to be bad. And the reason you know that, just grab your verse, Matthew 25, 12. What does it say? And answering them with judgment, he said. Ipin means he said. Answering them with judgment is there. Amen lehuahumin. Every time this phrase occurs, something bad happened in history prior. So it ain't going to be nice now. I've already done the videos on that, so you can go look at them. Okay, I've tracked the history. <coughs> I've tracked the history through now and and shown what each one of these, you know, the benchmarks mean. World War One, World War Two, back in the time of Islam in the first rows. And this last time this was used was for the English Reformation. So the implication is, first of all, that it's going to be a renewal of the Crusades, okay, because I, I've gone through the videos on this before, because that, that was over here, see, the two prior times, okay, see, here's the prior time, this was the Crusades, specifically the Second Crusade, the next time Amen Lego Humin is used, this is the English Reformation, so whatever it is, it's big, it's about Christianity. It's about warring. And the way we're going, because we got the same problem with the Muslims and the same saber rattling that's going on. And that was then with the Byzantine Empire, which is where Russia is now. And of course, U.S. didn't exist in those days, but it was the same arguments. Chances are real good we're looking at a second crusade, which means a religious war by Christians. Because that's how the other one started. And the Reformation was a religious war by Christians against England. So there's going to be another Reformation. So that's why this is 7-7 seven. Seven is a tribulational number. Does it mean the tribulation? Well, the same st stuff has happened before because this is the third time this is occurring. Fourth time. The first time was way up here, see, when the temple fell. When the temple fell. Well, that was a pretty big disaster. Israel ends up dying. Okay? Second time, it's the Crusades. That was a pretty bad time. Israel ended up dying. See, that that's not second coming. Alright? And you say, well, it could be the Tribulation. Yeah, technically. But it's also been something else bad before. So don't go drooling and saying, okay, well, I'm not going to even try to work now. I'm not going to, I'll just live off my savings because I'm like the, the white-sheeted folks in the 1950s on Mulholland Drive in Los Angeles. The Lord's coming back tomorrow, so there's no point in doing anything. No, there are other bad things that happened of tribulation quality already in history. And this little phrase, amen lego, who mean truly, I tell you. That's how you translate it. Truly I tell you. Or believe it, really. Amen means to believe it. Believe it when I tell you. Okay, well, believe it when I tell you this was the English Reformation. That wasn't the Tribulation, but I'll bet a lot of folks thought so. Alright, so is it going to be a bad period starting in 2023? Oh, yeah. With all those apostate Christians in Russia and, and the U.S.? trying to unite and create a revival of Constantine's Rome, you better believe it. Does it mean it's going to be THE tribulation? No. Could be. Could be tomorrow. You know, Christ said up here, Kiboton. I can't search in the Greek in word. It won't let me do that. So let's see if I can find it. Kiboton. Until the day they went in the boat, they didn't know what hit them.
Let's see if I can search it. Usually I can't. If I have to, I'll just call it five works. Let's do KIB, see if it'll go. Yeah. Where'd you find it? Yeah, it can't it can't search in the Greek. Okay. Let me call up because that way if you see it at least in English you'll know. It's got the Noah language in it. Alright, this is Bible Works nine. This is the I all the text you just saw in Greek I pasted from it. We go Matthew twenty four and we'll take away the thingy. There we go. See? The coming of the Son of Man will just be like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and marrying, until the day that Noah entered the ark. Kiboton. Okay. Let me show you. The word that I was looking for. Kiboton. Alright. Until the day he entered. In other words, there was no warning. There were no bad times. It came on them suddenly without warning. And that's what Greek word takas means. And that's, mean, that's usually mistranslated. The Lord comes quickly or soon. No, it means suddenly without warning. So, if anything, you should be thinking, okay, well, I'm going to probably have to live through this period. Because it probably isn't going to be the tribulation. You know, when you got two two ways to look at something, pick the one that's harder as your interpretation. And then if it turns out to be nicer than that, fine, but you want to prepare based on the worst. And the worst thing is that this is not the tribulation, but is a horrible period of time that you're going to have to live through between 2023 and 2030. Why? Because of all those apostate Christians in Russia and the U.S. who are trying to marry each other, just like they have at least six times in history. Which was that Revelation 17, you know, videos that I w was doing on the sarcasm tour. What's happening now has happened many times before. It's a trend. It's a historical trend. Revelation 17 is, yes, prophetic for the actual tribulation. But it also stands for a historical trend because Satan does not know when the rapture happens. So this kind of thing that's going to happen is something he's going to keep on orchestrating. Reviving Rome. Revelation 17 is about the revival of Rome. I don't know who doesn't know that. But what they don't seem to know is it's been tried many times in history. And they're undergoing it now. This is our year, 2017. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. So apocrino means to answer with judgment. And it was the clause was phrased just so it would hit seven. And then after that is a phrase that every time it's been used before means nasty judgment like the death of a country. So the seven years is not the end of it. 2030 is the end of that seven. But then comes the worst part. I'm in Lego who mean for the next six years. And then he, you, if you read the text in English, it says, in answering them, he said, believe it when I tell you. And then this part is the killer. I don't know you. And who's he saying that to? He's saying that to all these Christians running around Trump saying, Lord, Lord, let us in. Yeah, Lord, Lord, let us in. Come back. We want to make you come back just like Daniel Speck thinks. He thinks that's going to be the, the second advent. 
they think that's going to be the second advent. They're knocking on the door and the Lord's going to come out all right. This is why I don't think it's going to be Trib. I don't know you. Now, the story doesn't stop there. It started in verse 25, the kingdom of heaven. So we're still talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're still talking about church. All right. After Daniel, I mean, Matthew 12, 25, 12, here's your epilogue. Okay. See to it because you don't know. You don't know. And when it says hour, that's a figure of speech. You don't know when. All right. That ends at 2061. And then the next parable, you can read it in your favorite translation, is where three slaves, meaning believers, not just ten where it's 50-50 split between foolish and wise. Now we've got three and two-thirds of them. Two-thirds of them are productive. That does not argue for a tribulation to begin. So what this is, is typical God cleaning house at the end of a 490. And our end of the 490 is right here. 2130 AD. 120 years is set backwards. You can test this in history too, because I already did the videos on that called Pass the Salt. 120 years back of this was 2010. 2010. This is 1998, okay, right here, 2010, 20, 2009 started here, that's when the Tea Party started, that's when Barack Obama started, that's when Putin started bad-mouthing Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, and that's when Donald Trump switched to mouth exactly whatever Putin said. Because Donald Trump is in love with Russia, has been since 1987 or even longer. It's, I can only trace it back to 1987. Why did Putin start a bad mouth in Clinton? Where you see it marked in black. Which is really funny. Virgin, believer, haha. -ha. The Tea Party starting up at the same time. Why did that start? Oh, because Hillary Clinton went to Kyrgyzstan. And they rented an air, they wanted to build and rent an air base from Kyrgyzstan who wanted to be independent of Russia. Putin didn't like that. He offered the, the leader of Kyrgyzstan some money, and then Clinton came in and offered more money. And the leader of Kyrgyzstan, what's he going to do? He agreed with Clinton and signed an agreement with her. That pissed off Putin really bad. So he started up a propaganda against Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. That didn't start before. Whatever Clinton and Obama have done wrong is beside the point. The point is Putin started his campaign against them then. And that's when Trump started his campaign against them then. Before that he was a Democrat. He was giving them money. And you got you know that famous picture on the internet with him and his wife and the Clintons. So that has to be after 2005. Okay after 2005 because he married Melania in 2005 so you see it's because Putin turned against them so now Donald Trump turned against them and that's when the Tea Party rose and it's all open to us open to us open to us Donald Trump anointed so you see why 2023 has to be bad even if you had no rapture okay so where this guy has some credence, but he don't know what he's talking about, but still the, the, the years he's picking are important. 2023 is going to be bad. 2030 is going to be bad. The time in between is going to be bad, but it does not stop there. Then the next six and the next five, and then other believers are going to grow right here. Other believers are going to look back on what we're going through now. And that, you know, that's by 2082. It's probably going to start happening sooner. 2082 plus 30, so about 2100. Okay, 2100 AD. 
they're going to be looking back on, on what happened to us and they're going to get with Bible. I've already done videos on that before. The millennials, their grandkids are in black here. They're going to be productive so it doesn't sound like the rapture is going to happen very soon. huh? If anything, this is probably going to complete because these people have to have time. If there's a productive group of Christians coming in the future, God is not going to truncate the time. Now, technically speaking, rapture could happen tomorrow. But when you know that a whole bunch of really productive believers are coming up in the future, then it's not too likely. And when you know that Christ carried this time out to 3213, not 2000. Okay? And even, even 2000, which is the wrong number anyhow, but even if you took 2000, oops, I'm going to have to stop this video. It's starting to go funky. You add 1050 to 2000 and you get 3050, which is way short. So we got time left. But I think my time is out because I don't know why the video isn't isn't uh, working too well. So we'll stop here.